Capgemini, one of the world's foremost providers of consulting technology and outsourcing services, reports results for the first half of 2013. Paul Armena, welcome. Hello. You are the chairman and CEO of Capgemini. You announced an improvement of your operating margin in the first half, but a slight drop in revenues. Could you comment on this? And also, can you tell us how confident you are about your performance for the second half of the year? So the first point is the second quarter was slightly better in terms of revenue. Uh, we were nearly flat, minus 0.4, and with some surprising good resistance even in some European countries. So to us from that standpoint, uh, an evolution of business trend that makes us confident that we will grow in the second half and meet our guidance. This being said, it's a market where today the engine is still the offshore production. So uh, overall on the first half, our revenue declined at constant perimeter and currency by 1%, while we have increased the volume of work by 5 points. The difference is actually that our onshore headcount are now back down a little bit, while we grow nearly 19% in India. So you see, we compensate for the, the competitiveness and the difficult of, uh, difficulties of a, a European market with a strong offshore momentum. And that explains notably the margin progression. We now publicize our margin with the reintegration of the Indian margin to the country where we sell. And that shows that our best margin now is in North America, more than 12% operating margin, which shows the benefit of offshoring that increase our margin. And what is your outlook for the second half of this year? We ended June with a good sales momentum. Uh, we could deliver on the first half a book to build for the project business of 106, so more than one that uh, would uh, position us for growth. Our pipeline has grown by 15%, and more important, our pipeline for large deal, deal above 50 million, has more than doubled over the year. So there is appetite. There is appetite for project. It's a difficult market. People know that the Eurozone will not grow massively in the next three years. But our customers take investment decisions. So it's about innovation, creating reason for investment, and tough competition of on prices. As we now maintain and slightly could grow our onshore margin, we use the offshore engine to reduce our average. Our average salaries went down by 5%, again, that, to that uh, change of offshore leverage. What is your guidance for the full year? So in terms of margin, we grew our operating margin by 50 basis points. Uh, that puts us clearly in good condition to meet our guidance of 30 basis point minimum that we can repeat with some confidence, of course. I would add something. As, as announced, we have reduced massively restructuring. We have now reduced restructuring from 169 to less than 80, and in the first half, only 30 million. We have a massive increase of operating results, and thus the net profit that increases by 30%. So it's a combination of margin, operating margin, strong evolution, plus a discipline of restructuring, and thus a good net results. You reported a very good cash situation at the end of June. What are you going to do with this cash? More return for shareholders or acquisitions? So the first point is we said that we look at acquisition and we say that for three main markets. North America, where we want to grow our market share, emerging markets, so out of Europe, and new technologies. This being said, we look at valuation with prudence, so we haven't conclu concluded any acquisition in H1, and we are prudent. So what I would just say regarding the cash and the balance sheet is, as everybody knows, uh, we have appointed a new chief financial officer, and I asked him to go look at our balance sheet. And he found that the group, thanks to more stringent cash discipline, can live with less gross cash. So we, we need less gross cash, and we have in front of us a potential dilution that could come from the conversion of the convertible bond that was issued in 2008. So the board has taken two main decisions. The first one is in the future, we will buy back the dilution that comes from 
equity-based incentive for our management. So share grants, stock purchase plan, or even if we repeat a PSAR warrant organization. Any dilution that comes from equity-based incentive will be compensated with share buyback. And the second point is, as we have in front of us a risk of dilution deriving from that convertible bond, we will allocate 400 million to, uh, to fight that dilution over the next 18 months. From a geographical standpoint, are you suffering from the economic situation in Europe? What about emerging economies where growth is slowing down, notably in Brazil, where you acquired CPM Braxis almost three years ago? And finally, what about the US? So first, I would start to mention that we had a, a pretty strong growth in emerging market, Asia Pacific and Latin America, in the second quarter, 15%. So that's better than what I heard from some of our peers. And notably in Brazil, we, are, we have grown by 18%. So our big contract with Caixa, which is a large public bank in Brazil, is fueling good growth in Brazil. So I feel quite safe on these emerging markets. North America, it's vibrant. I told you, best margin of the group, 12% operating margin. This is brilliant. But very modest growth, 1% uh, in Q2. So that's less than what we hoped. So today we have rebuilt the pipeline, motivated the management. I would expect us to resume growth in the second half so that we gain market share again by the year end. So solid margin probably must improve the, the, the top line. Just a word in North America, a bright performance in the financial sector. Now, regarding Europe, we know that Europe is uh, poised for mediocre growth, if any, in the next three years. But we still can sail in that environment. I just want to look at France, where in the first quarter we declined by 4.8%, and in the second quarter we grow, and we grow by 07 which shows that in a difficult economy, with the right offer, the good focus on innovation, and very competitive offer, thanks to offshoring again, we possibly can grow in some markets. I noticed that in the UK we shrink, notably because of the large Aspire contract, but in the commercial space we have grown 22%. So up to us to show that in a mediocre environment we can handle the European challenge. How are you currently managing innovation and the shift to new technological trends? So my view is the market is driven by two main trends. The first one is customer want the best service for the best price. Thus, big investment in industrialization, methodologies, tools, and offshore production. But there is an appetite for innovation. Today, you know, we live with buzzword. The new buzzword is SMAC. SMAC stands for social, mobility, analytics, and cloud. But we see, and notably in the US, a real shift of traditional service to cloud service. This is demanding. The group has built strong positions, strong alliance. I think we are very strong with Microsoft, with our new offering, SkySide, that we launched mid-June. We are pretty good with Amazon Web Service, too. And some innovative solutions like NetSuite, I think even that we are their first partner globally. So we must place bets on this new market. I am confident that this will be levers for growth. You now have 44,000 employees in India, and you've embarked on a journey to optimize your pyramid of skills. Will you continue recruiting in your historical countries? Yes, we do. So today, the first point is we need, it, we need every year to rejuvenate the pyramid because young graduates are the, the energy we need to uh, bring the momentum, the mindset, the fire in the company. So we need that, and we will continue. So we use attrition. When people resign, we try to promote first and not to do what we call lateral hires. So we have a big focus on young graduates. And we have recruited 43% of young graduates in the first half, which is unusual because usually, as we all know, they get their diplomas in September and usually the season for graduate recruitment is the third quarter. But I think we are doing a good job. Historically, we do that, but still, we recruited more than 50% of our employees in our traditional country. Frankly, we don't give up. We must have active, dynamic population, both sides, in production center, wherever they are, and 
with the clients. The client want to see a mixed population of senior experienced people and young energetic people. So we will continue to recruit on in our what we would call onshore location. Your share price has risen by some 24% since the beginning of the year. Before we part company, do you have one final message that you would like to address to your shareholders in what is otherwise a difficult climate? First point, as I said, uh, I think uh, the group had delivered a, a solid work in optimizing the profit and loss. I think the PNL was well managed. We now introduce more discipline in our balance sheet management. So we will be a little more rigorous regarding what we do with cash, uh, more focus on cash collection. Today, all our managers are incentivized on cash collection. I think that's important. And with some buyback, we've shown that we care for dilution. I think that's an important sign for our shareholder. But uh, beyond that, the end of large waves of restructuring also allows us to translate operating margin into net profit. And you see the evolution of the net profit is quite significant since over a year we moved our net profit percentage on revenue from 2.6 to 3.5. This is a massive growth and we will continue on that journey. I dream one day we will drive and guide on normalized EPS, earning per share, and that would help shareholders to know where they can place their money and what are the returns they can expect. Paul Hermelin, Chairman and CEO of Capgemini, thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian.